China, a giant that had been asleep for centuries, finally woke up and revealed itself to the world at the end of the 20th century. After the Cultural Revolution, the country found itself lost in a sea of doubts. And it was in this scenario that Deng Xiaoping, a leader with his head in the stars, took charge in 1978. Xiaoping wasn't afraid to roll up his sleeves and implemented bold reforms, opening a new path for China. The country, once closed for business, decided to open its doors to foreign investment. China industrialized in the blink of an eye, transforming itself into a true global industrial power. The drive of the Chinese people, together with the strategic vision of their leaders, propelled the country towards a bright future. The story of China's rise is a story of overcoming, persistence and success, like Pele on the field. Deng Xiaoping, knowing that the way to go was to modernize, put into practice a series of impressive reforms. The heart of these reforms was economic opening. The special economic zones, the famous SEZs, were created with the mission of attracting multinational companies, offering tax advantages and infrastructure to die for. Xiaoping's brilliant move to allow private property, even if just a little bit, gave the economy a boost. Private companies, which previously didn't even exist in dreams, sprouted up like weeds, encouraging innovation and competition. The state, which used to control everything, became more of a referee, giving space for the private sector to grow. Education also underwent a major reform, you see? China invested heavily in science and technology because nobody wants to be left behind, right? Deng Xiaoping's reforms were a milestone in history, opening the doors to economic growth that no one expected. With the economy booming, China became the darling of foreign companies looking for cheap and plentiful labor. People were coming out of the woodwork. Millions of rural workers migrated to the cities in search of a better life. Multinational companies took advantage of low production costs to manufacture products at prices no one could beat. And China, clever as it is, learned everything quickly, absorbing technologies and upgrading its production processes. Combining cheap labor, foreign investment and the ability to learn fast, China became the factory of the world, a true product-making machine. China realized that to keep up with the fast pace of its economy, it needed to invest heavily in infrastructure. And didn't they go ahead and do it? Modern roads, railways, ports and airports were built in record time, connecting the country from north to south. The construction of a high-speed rail network revolutionized transportation, both for people and goods. China also spared no expense on energy, building hydroelectric, thermal and more recently, wind and solar farms. These infrastructure investments not only boosted economic growth, but also improved the quality of life for the population. After all, no one deserves to live in a rut, right? China adopted a very aggressive export policy, flooding the global market with products at bargain prices. The mass production of products such as electronics, clothing and toys, all at affordable prices, won over consumers around the world. But all this success had a catch. The Chinese trade surplus created tension with other countries, which accused China of playing dirty in international trade. The 2008 global financial crisis showed that the Chinese growth model based on external demand had its weaknesses. Faced with this, China realized it needed to diversify its economy, reducing its dependence on exports and encouraging domestic consumption. After all, no one wants to put all their eggs in one basket, right? Of course, all this economic growth in China came at a price, both for the environment and for society. The unbridled exploitation of natural resources resulted in air pollution, water contamination, and soil degradation. Social inequality also increased, with the gap between rich and poor widening. But China is not one to be outdone. The government, aware of the problems, implemented measures to deal with environmental and social issues. Stricter environmental laws were passed and investments in renewable energy were made. Programs to combat poverty and reduce inequality were also put in place. After all, China's challenge is to find a balance between economic growth and sustainability. Aware of the need to diversify its economy, China decided it was time for an upgrade and went for a growth model based on innovation and domestic consumption. 
huge investments in research and development were made with the aim of transforming China into a global technological power. China has become a breeding ground for innovative startups, competing head-to-head -head in areas such as artificial intelligence, robotics, biotechnology, and electric vehicles. Chinese companies have started to file more and more patents, showing that they are here to stay and rivaling the giants of Silicon Valley. The country seeks to integrate traditional manufacturing with digital technologies, such as the Internet of Things and cloud computing. This digital transformation of Chinese industry aims to drive the next phase of the country's economic growth. With the increase in people's income, China saw the emergence of an increasingly large and powerful middle class. This new Chinese middle class, hungry for better quality products and services, has become a major engine of economic growth. The Chinese government realized the potential of the domestic consumer market and decided to give it a little push, implementing policies to stimulate consumption. The growth of domestic consumption not only boosts the economy, but also helps to reduce China's dependence on exports. As domestic demand strengthens, China becomes less vulnerable to fluctuations in the global economy. The Belt and Road Initiative, BRI, also known as the New Silk Road, is an ambitious global development strategy launched by China in 2030. The initiative aims to connect Asia, Europe, Africa and other regions of the world through a vast infrastructure network. The BRI is seen as a way for China to increase its geopolitical and economic influence, opening up new markets for its companies. But it's not all sunshine and roses. The BRI has also been criticized. Some countries fear that the initiative is a kind of debt trap, with developing nations becoming indebted to China. In any case, the BRI is a reflection of China's growing influence on the global stage. China's economic growth has changed the game on the global stage, leading to an increasing rivalry with the United States. The two countries compete for geopolitical, technological and economic influence, creating tension in areas such as trade, security and human rights. The trade war between China and the United States, which began in 2018, is a clear example of this rivalry. And it doesn't stop there. In addition to the trade dispute, China and the United States also compete in areas such as artificial intelligence, 5G and the space race. This rivalry between China and the United States will have profound consequences for the world order. The world is moving towards a multipolar system with different poles of power vying for influence. China's rise as a global economic power is one of the most important events of the 21st century. The country, once synonymous with poverty and backwardness, has become one of the engines of the global economy. Of course, China faces challenges, both internal and external, such as the need to ensure sustainable economic growth and address environmental problems. But the country has already proven that it is capable of overcoming obstacles and adapting to change. We live in an increasingly multipolar world, with different centers of power and growing interdependence between nations. The future will depend on how the world deals with the rise of China.